Hello, and welcome to the sixth and final film in this series of films about mole calculations. This doesn't mean that this is going to be the last kind of mole calculation you ever do, but just for this simple kind of introductory course, this is the last one. So we're going to combine all the things we've learned so far into one, and we're going to see if we can actually use mole relationships, mole relationships which we got from the balanced equation, remember, and mole ratios, to find out quantities in reactions. Sorry, got that a little bit confused. We're going to use the mole ratios from balanced equations, the mole relationships, that's all the little formulas that we got from this triangle that the number of moles is the mass over the molar mass, okay? Those sort of things. All right, so be great if you know what those symbols mean because I'm not going to go into them in a lot of detail in this film. I'm going to assume that you know about them. And here we go. Two example questions to go through. Right. First thing with these things is always to find out what information am I given about what things, okay? The salt sodium sulfate can be made by neutralizing sodium hydroxide and sulfuric acid. You'll usually be given a balanced equation because without one of these you can't really do the question. How many grams of water are formed when 49 grams of sulfuric acid reacts? Here's our water and here's our sulfuric acid. Right, how many grams of water? Let's find out what we're being asked here. How many grams of water? This is a mass. We're being asked to find the mass of water. Do we know a formula for mass? Yes, we do. It is the number of moles times the molar mass. I can always find molar mass from the periodic table. So only one of these things I don't know. Let's see. Is the number of moles of water related to the number of moles of sulfuric acid? Well, I've got a 2 to 1 ratio. So the number of moles of water is 2 compared to the number of moles of sulfuric acid, which is 1. So I've got to put 2 and 1 some way up. If I said that the number of moles of water was half the number of moles of sulfuric acid, that would be false. The number of moles of water is 2 over 1, twice as large as the number of moles of sulfuric acid. So if I can find the number of moles of sulfuric acid, I know the number of moles of water, and I can find the answer to my problem. <coughs> can I find the number of moles of sulfuric acid? What's the formula for number of moles? Well, it's little m over big M. Can I find little m? Yes, I can. This is 49 grams over the molar mass of sulfuric acid. I'm going to do this just rounding, and I'm not going to show you how I've calculated it, because you should know by now how to calculate a molar mass. Two hydrogens, one sulfur, four oxygens is about 98. So that is about <coughs> 0.5 of a mole. I'm not using my calculator, but you should do in a test and use the exact figures from the periodic table got 0.5 moles of sulfuric acid. The number of moles of water is twice that number, which is 1. So I've got a 1 to put in here. So I've got 1 mole of water times the molar mass of water. Well, I know that's 18 because it's 2 ones and 16. Okay, well, not plus, but times 18. Again, I'm rounding here, so let's not round. Let's be good about this and say it's 18.016. That's 18.016. 016 grams. Okay? So that's how we do a reacting mass calculation. Maybe rewind the film and just get yourself talked through that again if you want, or just watch the next example. Here's another one. Right? Again, I'm going to find the information that I'm told. I'm going to write a formula for the thing I'm trying to find, and I'm going to see how things are related in the balanced equation. How many tons of ore is needed? to make 828 tons of lead. Here's the lead. Where's the ore? Yellow lead 2 oxide ore. Lead 2 oxide. There's the ore. Right? How many tons of this? That's a mass calculation, right? So the mass of ore equals the number of moles times its molar mass. I know this formula. Okay? Do I know its number of <coughs> moles? Well, I'm not told it straight away. Can I find its molar mass? Yes, I can, because that's in the periodic table. How am I going to find the number of moles of it? Well, perhaps it's related to the number of moles of lead. Okay? Is it related to the number of moles of lead? Well, let's see. The number of moles of ore 
or the number of moles of PBO, which is 2, is the same as the number of moles of lead, because that's 2 as well. So number of moles of PBO equals number of moles of PB. If I can find the number of moles of PB, the number of moles of lead, then I can find the number of moles of PBO. Number of moles is equal to little m over big M. Do I know the mass? Yes, I do. It's 828 tons, or 828 million grams. Because there's 1,000 kilograms in a ton, 1,000 grams in a kilogram. Okay? Divide that by the molar mass of PB, 207. Okay? I have absolutely no idea what that would be in my head, but it looks like about... Uh, uh, what? About 3.6 3 million? About 3.6 million moles? Whatever number it is, let's call it X. Okay? Then... This number of moles of lead is the same as the number of moles of lead oxide. So I can put whatever number this is into here. Okay, this is the number of moles of my ore, right? This is the number of moles of my ore. I'm going to multiply that by the molar mass of my ore. So I'm going to go X, because I found this here. That's my number of moles. Multiplied by 207 plus 16. 207 plus 16. Okay? whatever number that is, I've got it, hooray, and I've done the question, okay? So once again, I've started off with a formula for the thing I'm asked, how many tons of ore, that's a mass equals number of moles times molar mass. I've said to myself, I know the molar mass because it's in the periodic table, or here I'm told it in the question even. I just need to find the number of moles of lead oxide, but that's equal to the number of moles of lead in this equation, because they're both two, okay? So then I find the number of moles of lead, by using the mass that I'm given and its molar mass to find the number of moles, plug that into here, whatever the formula is here, and use it to find the number of moles of lead oxide. Okay, if you know how to use these formulas, these calculations are just about putting a few things together. If you don't know how to use the formulas and you forget them, you can't do these calculations and you drop huge amount of marks. All right, so start simple, make sure you're good at it, then move on to these calculations and hopefully you won't find them too hard at all. Maybe even did a few of them in year 10. Just before we finish, okay, some people make the mistake, let's get my red pen, right, the molar mass. They go, well, isn't that 2 times 207 plus 16, because there's a 2 here, right? Just remember what this is. This is the mass of one mole. If you go chucking in these twos, then you're finding the mass of two moles. All right? So this should always be, when you're calculating the molar mass, it should always ignore the number before it. All right? Just a little tip there. Anyway, that is it for year 11 mole calculations for now. Um, good luck with them, I suppose. And you um, shouldn't need luck because you should be quite good at them. And uh, you've got a calculator and it's all easy peasy. Anyway, so uh, good luck in the test.